All right, folks, let's do this. Maximum RD back again. And I have done this video because in my last video about the Revision Zero Dreamcast, and by the way, again, because of a couple uh, comments from uh, some of you people over in the UK uh, who are in possession of PAL uh, Dreamcast, uh, yeah, the... the uh, situation with Dreamcast as they were manufactured and handled over in your uh, uh, area of the world <laughs> over there in the UK was quite different as you can imagine uh, I'm, I'm sure you're quite used to that with uh, consoles and game releases uh, because being on the PAL system it was handled quite different than it was in both the USA and Japan um, and the NTSC consoles uh, and Canada, of course. Um, so, in regards to the possibility of even having a Revision Zero console in those uh, areas, or having a PAL Revision Zero uh, Revision console, Zero console, uh, from the information that I could find. Again, this is just me searching, looking for the information. I mean, I can't give definite answers because, you know, I, I wasn't with Sega during the whole manufacturing process. But from the answers that I could find online, what the situation appears to be is that, no, if you're in the UK, if you or if you're in possession of a PAL Dreamcast, um, there were no officially labeled Revision Zero Dreamcasts. Again, I'm not saying this is 100% the case. It's just information that I've been able to find. I'm passing it on. No legally official PAL Dreamcasts were ever released under the Revision Zero brand. That's what, that's the information I found. If you found different, great. Please tell me in the comments. But apparently what that means is because there's no Revision Zero, um, you might think, well, then there's no way I'm going to have that metal fan or the heat pipes or anything like that. But then again, you know what? There's people that have claimed, claimed, I again, I can't verify this, but there are people who have claimed of, of being in possession of a, a PAL console, a PAL Dreamcast, uh, you know, the ones that were distributed in the UK, that do indeed have the metal fan and the heat pipes combination built into them um, now but they are labeled uh, revision one they are labeled revision one so what does that mean I don't know I can't tell you you know I'm just passing the information that I find I can't verify 100 percent anything you can verify it 100% by looking at the label on the bottom of your Dreamcast, see what revision it says, and looking in the uh, side vent of your Dreamcast and see if you got a metal fan in there. That's pretty much your 100% your answer, no matter what I tell you. So, Okay, now let's get on with the uh, point of this particular video. Um, in the comments, I noticed uh, a, few, a few of you had noticed... Uh, you know, you mentioned what revision you had, you know, oh darn, you know, I don't have a revision, revision zero, I have a one or a two, blah, blah, blah. But what I did notice is a couple of you mentioned that my Dreamcast powers on, but it won't read discs, or simply um, my Dreamcast isn't working, it's not reading discs. And I wanted to do this video because there can be, there is a good chance that there's a very easy fix for this problem. Um, uh, and I will point out also for those of you who have had the problem saying, oh yeah, there's uh, my Dreamcast resets all the time or my Dreamcast power supply seems to be dead. I'm telling you now, if you just use Google, if you search and you use terms like, um, you know, Dreamcast reset fix, Dreamcast reset fix, uh, Dreamcast um, reset problem, you know, things like that, or Dreamcast dead power supply fix, or Dreamcast dead PSU fix. You'd be amazed at all the information you can find 
um, free information, guides, uh, p other people out there have done their own fixes and repairs. You might want to look into that because, you know, some of them don't require replacement parts. They simply require you to do some things, cleaning certain parts uh, in your console, checking certain uh, resistors, what have you, etc. Um, uh, those of you who have had the problem where you plugged in a cheap or third-party uh, controller and suddenly your, dream, your Dreamcast control ports don't work anymore, even if you plug in a retail controller, there's fixes for that, okay? Um, and most of them are relatively easy. I'll just touch on the controller one quickly. Underneath here, when see, there's your controller ports. And underneath here, if you remove the screws here, now if you haven't learned already or noticed, I'm not the most technical person. Resistors, capacitors, I, I don't know one from the other, but so some of you can be laughing because you know these things better. But if you remove the screws here and pull off this cover, for each controller port, you're going to find, I guess it's a it's a resistor. I'm going to say resistor. Maybe it's a capacitor. I don't know. But, you know, something that looks like one of those babies right there. You know what I'm talking about. You're going to find one at the back of each port connection underneath this cover here once you remove the screws. Now, let me just say, some of you are going to say, oh no, don't do that. Uh, bottom line, when you plug in a non-Sega brand controller, a third-party one, a cheap one, whatever, it may be sending a signal, a slight variance in the, uh, the power or what have you, or voltage, I don't know. And that's what caused the, the, uh, the resistor to blow and taking out your ports. And even when you plug in a, a Sega brand, it doesn't work anymore. Your controller ports are dead. Let's just say that. One or more of your controller ports are dead, no matter what type of controller you plug in there. When you find that resistor, there's a simple fix. Obviously, you can remove it from the board, go to Radio Shack, go to your local electronics store, get the proper replacement, put it back on the board. And you know what? That's great. Solder it on if that's what you're capable of doing. And that works for you, that's great. And as long as you stick to good quality and Sega brand first party controllers, you'll never have the problem again. If you're out someday and your kid brother puts puts in a, you know, maybe the same controller that caused the problem in the first place or, you know, a friend of yours or a relative uh, plugs in the controller he brought over that he bought for five bucks from uh, you know a Chinese site or something not saying that there's anything wrong with them many of them are fine but uh, uh, you you're gonna end up you know blowing it again and so here's here's the fix that has worked for me in the past what you do is you simply twist that resistor or capacitor or whatever the hell it is you, you twist it and turn it in one direction until the two exposed pins underneath make contact okay when that happens when you twist it and those two pins underneath that are connected to the board that connect the resistor to the board make contact they effectively bypass the resistor itself and re recreate that connection and your controller port will work again I'm telling you this from my own personal experience and right away some of you are gonna say oh my god Rob why would you do that because you're bypassing the resistor. The resistor is there for a reason. Why would you do that? Um, you're going to cause other damage. The majority of people, and including myself from my own personal experience, seem to agree that in Sega's infinite wisdom, maybe it was part of their plan, the, re the, the resistor that they happen to put there is just not tolerant at all. Not tolerant of, of basically even a slight variance in in the uh, current voltage whatever it's not a big deal any manufacturer third-party uh, brand cheap Dreamcast controller whatever they're not a danger to the system but they were very uh, tight on the level of you know what they would allow basically with that resistor was it done on purpose so if you didn't use a Sega brand controller, 
you know, you effectively blow that port. Uh, I'm not a big conspiracy kind of guy. I don't really buy into that kind of stuff. Some have said so. Uh, basically meaning, if you simply uh, twist the pins and, and bypass the resistor, and you have your ports functional again, and you know from that day on, plug in whatever controller you want. Your Sega brand, your Cheapo brand, your Mad Cats, your Pelican, your uh, uh, Chinese brand controller. You know, I've gone for years using controllers like that, and they haven't caused any further damage. So, again, it's up to you. This is one of those things. Uh, this is my, my pathetic uh, attempt at a tutorial, but it goes with the same warnings as you would see in anybody's. I'm not responsible for what you do. I'm telling you from my experience. I've done it on a couple Dreamcasts. I've simply connected the two pins together and I've used any controller that I want and I've never had a problem since in years. So others will say different. Some will say different simply because, you know, going against the rules and, and bypassing the resistor, that's fine. If you, you know, you've, you can go by your own experiences. But some say, again, that Sega was just being a little too tight with what they would allow to be plugged in there. And I've had no problem years since uh, with the controller ports, with any controller that I use. All right, so up to you. You can find that information again. Just do some searching. Uh, but now, this is the big and main reason of this video. And sorry I didn't get to it sooner. If you have a problem reading discs on your Dreamcast, now, let's be clear here. If you plug in a... If you, pop a disc in there, like just, just for demonstration purposes. This is something this is for the PC. If you pop a disc in there, power it on, and it doesn't even spin, well, you've got other issues. Okay, It could be the band that spins, the spindle is broken or something. I don't know. Excuse me. Or it could be, I burped, I don't know, sorry. <laughs> or it could be just completely dead. But, um... If, however, when you power it on, the disc spins and you hear the usual lovely grinding of the Dreamcast laser trying to read the disc, so you know it's receiving power. You know that it's spinning the disc. And uh, as I said in my video description here, basically if you, have one, if you have one of these eight symptoms, okay, disc spins but game does not load. Disc spins but Dreamcast goes directly to CD player, of course, when you have a game in there. Disc spins but loads game only half the time or some of the time, uh, you know, one out of every ten times, etc. Disc spins but once loaded, it seems to have a lot of trouble. Audio glitches, stuttering, frame rate, etc. Uh, or how about loads audio CDs fine but, but does not play games? Loads games fine but does not play audio CDs. Plays retail games fine but does not load CDR backups. Uh, okay, right now I'm not going to even get into the issue of if there's Dreamcasts that exist that just don't read backups. That's that's a whole separate issue. What I'm saying here, if, you, if you're saying that it loads games fine but does not uh, load CDR backups, but it did load CDR backups previously, and that's what you, you claim, <laughs> then this is for you. If it loads CDR backups but will no longer load retail games, this is also for you. Okay, so that's, I'm going to tell you how to uh, fix that. It can be done. I did it, Mr. Non-Technical Guy. Um, you don't really need tool. There's one suggested tool that you might need, but it is not necessary. It just means you'll have to do more trial and error and uh, spend a little bit more time. And my battery's about to die, so I'll cut back to the, to the tutorial as soon as uh, the battery recharges. All right, back with hopefully enough battery power to get right down to it. What is this? This is a ohmmeter, 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 whatever, ohmmeter. Ah, uh, let's hear the official pronunciation. Ohmmeter. 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 Yeah, you don't need one of those. Okay. Uh, the tutorial that I linked to actually. Uh, suggest that you may use one of those, but it is not absolutely necessary. And for a non-technical idiot like me, uh, yeah, it's a good thing it's not necessary. So, 
let's get to it now, finally. Sorry for the delay. And I work the best with, I do the best with what I have here, folks. So, um, all right. Machine power's on, doesn't read discs. That's the bottom line. Whether they're backups, games, audio, CDs, might read one but not the other. What's the problem? Okay. What you want to do, first of all, to be able to access the area you need, see the lens right there? Obviously, all your discs that you've tried and you're having a problem with, you've cleaned them and you've concluded that they're scratch-free and they did work before. Um, obviously, you've cleaned your lens, maybe with a cotton swab and a little bit of uh, isoprol, whatever, alcohol. <laughs> maybe that didn't work for you either. You clean the lens. This is the last ditch attempt right here. You're going to do a pot adjustment, laser calibration, whatever you want to call it. So you're going to manually take your thumb here and carefully, slowly pull back the laser. You need to do this because the next step requires that you have a little bit of slack to work with. Okay, so we've done that. All right. Um, d again, you know, you're going to want to, if these wires here on the side, they might be pinned down underneath this, these little clips. You want to remove that so that the wire is free. Again, to give you some more slack. And now you're going to just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and pull up the whole laser system here, whatever you want to call it. Oh my God, there's a hair in there. There's a hair. All right. Now check this out. Again, can't get too close with this piece of crap camera. But see, right there. All right, so I'll give you one close-up of this because they're annoying to do in the first place. Let's see if I can get there. Let's put that in place. And please, I beg your forgiveness here. Right here. Let me get close. Hopefully. I swear I will have a good camera one day. Oh, crap. Hold on. I'm just taking it off the tripod so I can get closer. All right. All right. So, what are we looking at? Hopefully, give me some light. All right, so there's the uh, the little ribbon cable that connects to the board for your laser. I'm going to move up a bit. Now, right there, right there, hopefully you can see it. I'll try to tilt this up a bit. Okay. That's what you need to get at, this, this little nub here, this little round switch right there. You need to get to that, okay? That's what you're going to be adjusting. Oh, there's a better. There it is. Right there. Right there. That's what you're going to be adjusting, okay? There we go. And there was the ribbon cable I showed you right there. That's what you're going to be adjusting. Okay. So you'll have a little screwdriver, hopefully, or something that you can that will allow you to turn that switch right there. Now, the rest of it, I don't need to show you anything else. Let me just try to explain it to you. Um, you might want to take something that, like, um, I don't know, a highlighter, a little marker, something that will allow you to, before you go making any adjustments and turning that little switch there, mark it in some way. Mark it so that, you know, the switch and maybe just on the outside of the switch, you create a line there, line it up so that you always know your starting point 
okay? And then in very, very tiny, minor little movements, you want to turn it clockwise, counterclockwise, what have you. Um, make tiny little adjustments. This will be time consuming. You make those tiny little adjustments. Start, try by going up. You'll, you'll, know, you'll adjust it a few times, three, four times going up. And if you find you're getting no success, put it back to where you started, as I suggested, by lining it back up to where you marked it and turn it in the opposite direction. Again, in the tiniest of increments, just little, little movements, adjust it. See if that works for you. And obviously, during this whole procedure, now, you don't have to worry, you don't have to assemble the entire unit again for every little adjustment you make. Just you make the adjustment and you throw this uh, back in place, okay? You're going to have your AV cables and power hooked up to the unit. Don't touch anything over here <laughs> when you've got power running through it. Carefully, you'll put your disc in whatever you want it to be. Um, and again, you have to determine if you were able to read CDR backups at one point in time, but you can't any longer, whatever you're having trouble reading, well, obviously that's the type of disc you're, you're going to want to put in there. If you only care about reading retail games, then just put a retail game in and make those adjustments. Um, you, will, you will likely find at some point that, you know, maybe before you were able to read CDR backups, but not retail games. Now you can read retail games, but you can't read backups. You'll go through all kinds of uh, uh, different uh, results, obviously, until you get to the point where you've made an adjustment where you can read everything that you want to uh, put into your Dreamcast. Well, <laughs> everything that was made for it. No, no amount of laser calibration is going to allow you to read a PS2 disc. But um, yeah, so once you got everything reading and loading the way that you want it to, well, you put it back together and Bob's your uncle. But here's the thing, for every little adjustment that you make, again, you'll have your power hooked up, you'll have your AV cable hooked up, and you simply, right here, right to the top uh, right of the optical drive, in this corner here, there's the, that's the little switch, that's the lid switch. So you can simply push and hold that down when you power on and your disc will spin as normal and load, what have you. You don't have to put the cover back on. You don't have to put it all back together. For every little adjustment, just power it on, hold that little switch down, and check the results on your television, see if it's loading up or not. And that's all I can tell you. And that's about the best I can show you with this uh, camera. Um, but much better, much, much better links and information. I, I'm, I'm linking to at least two with pictures and information and much better details and how you can use an ometer if you so choose uh, to better clearly read your whatever I don't know I'm not a technical guy and this was my probably my last attempt at anything technical but I wanted to pass the information because really the the issue with the uh, ports on the Dreamcast being burnt out or the reset if you're Dreamcast is constantly resetting when it shouldn't. Uh, strangely enough, that has something to do with cleaning the pins on your power supply. I know it's really weird, but because uh, I think it's an overheating issue. Um, and all these things, disc reading errors, if the disc is spinning, then it's a relatively easy fix. And I, I urge you to uh, seek out those methods, check out the links that I supply, get your Dreamcast up and running again for basically nothing, okay? Rob, Maximum RD, over and out. I will never be a guy that does tutorials. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching anyway. Bye.